get everything ready. As I mentioned, this is a glorious day. It's a day when we celebrate grace, when we celebrate God's love for all of us. God's decision to say that whether or not you know me or whether or not you love me, I love you first and I claim you as my own. And so we come to worship this morning with that joy, that affirmation, and that um, wholeness and, and that sense of belonging in our hearts. And I pray that it brings us all joy. Let us worship God. Know that, uh, I'd like to let you know that um, Rick is on vacation this week which is why you see me over here, and um, my intrepid choir is helping me out this morning. Please join me in the opening sentences. I am with you, says the Lord. I have called you by name. You are mine. So now let's all stand and sing together. Now this hymn is not familiar to you. It's from the Glory to God hymnal. I think the music, is the music on the overheads too? Awesome. Um, but the choir is going to lead you in the first verse. There are four verses, but it's very, very simple to sing. So take me to the water, but you have to stand up. Please remain standing as we pray together and give thanks for the gift of baptism. O oh Lord our God, we give you thanks for the faith, hope, and love you give to us through the blessing of our baptism, claiming us as your beloved children, calling us to the path of discipleship, revealing to us the light of your glory. By the power of your Holy Spirit poured out upon us in baptism, 
Help us to follow you with faith, to trust in you with hope, and to serve you with love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Obeying the word of the Lord and confident of Christ's promises, we baptize those whom God has called. In baptism, God claims us and seals us to show that we belong to God. God frees us from sin and death, uniting us with Jesus Christ in his death and his resurrection. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, the body of Christ, and joined to Christ's ministries of love, peace, and justice. So let's remember the joy of our own baptism as we celebrate this sacrament. All right, can you join me up here? Bring that baby. We have, over the past few months, gotten to meet Camden. Camden is the number one amen quarter in our congregation, often giving feedback on, on the service as it goes. But we're so glad that he is part of us. Oh, just gaze at him. So, as the congregation that is gathered here as a representation of the whole church of Jesus Christ, do you, as members of that body, promise to guide and nurture Camden by word and deed with love and prayer? If so, please say we do. And will you encourage him to know and follow Christ and to be members of his church? If so, please say we will. I'm going to forget myself up here. <laughs> Through the sacraments of baptism, God established in Jesus Christ with us, we come to know God in a very particular way. Within that covenant, God gives us new life, strengthens us to resist evil, and nurtures us in love. Through this covenant, we choose whom we will serve by turning from evil and turning to Christ. So, Addison, Mama, I will ask you now to answer the following questions and take the baptismal vows on Camden's behalf. So trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? If so, please say, I do. I do. Who is your Lord and Savior? Is Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? Yes. And will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? If so, please say, I will. I will. There you, here, I'll give you this one. Here, you can hold. Oh, you can hold this one. Oh, here, take this. You know, just here, just take this. You want to hold that? Okay. Yeah, you can play with that. <laughs> so let's now offer thanks over the water. It's clean. Okay. Let's pray. We give you thanks, eternal God, for the nourish and the sustenance of all living things by the gift of water. In the beginning of time, your spirit moved over the watery chaos, calling forth order and life. In the time of Noah, you destroyed evil by the waters of the flood, giving righteousness a new beginning. You led Israel out of slavery through the waters of the sea into the freedom of the promised land. 
in the waters of the Jordan, Jesus was baptized by John and anointed with your spirit. By the baptism of his own death and resurrection, Jesus Christ set us free from sin and death and opened the way to eternal life. We thank you, O God, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death, and from it, we are raised to share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the power of the Spirit. Send your Spirit to move over this water, that it may be a fountain of deliverance and rebirth. Wash away the sin of all who are cleansed by it. Raise them to new life. Graft them to the holy body of Christ. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon Camden that he may have the power to do your will and continue forever in the risen life of Christ. To you all be praise, honor, and glory through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who is with you and the Holy Spirit and lives and reigns forever. Amen. Camden. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You are a beloved child of God and God will bless you and keep you and you will always know what it is to be loved. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, we are so thankful for the gift of love, for the gift of baptism, for the gift of grace for the gift of Addison, and for the gift of Camden. Bless them and keep them always in your love and peace and mercy. Amen. Now I'm going to take you, little buddy. I think so. (laughs) And we're going to do a walk around. And I want you to see all of these beautiful people over here. You've met a lot of them. And this is your new family, your family. Yeah, seriously, all of them. And they love you, and they will always love you and keep you, and we're going to do our best. You can take that microphone. I know you want to squeeze it. (laughs) But we will do our best to love you the way God loves us, and we will do all sorts of things, like singing and playing and we will feed you, Uh, seriously, we will feed you and we will teach you the things that we know so you will always know what it is to be loved by God. And let's pray. O Lord, uphold Camden by your Holy Spirit. Give him the spirit of wisdom and understanding as he grows. Give him knowledge of your counsel. Give him a spirit of joy. And bless him and keep him. Amen. Let's welcome Camden. And we do have his baptismal certificate. You want me to give it to? All right. And his little Bible. So we've got that here. All right. I invite you to stand with me as we sing to God be the glory.
Please be seated. We do have um, a number of concerns that have been listed on our prayer request list. One of them in particular is to please remember, as I mentioned, that um, the Brannon family will be holding uh, a funeral here on Wednesday at two o'clock. Um, uh, Fran Brannon did pass away uh, last week from cancer. So we uphold that family in our prayers as we come to this time when we are uh, praying for ourselves, for, our, for others, for our community, for the church, and for the world. So let's pray for silently, and then I will lead us. Let's pray. O oh God of grace, we pray for the church. Make us a people of your word and spirit so that we may live as true disciples of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. O oh God of grace, bless us with peace. We pray for the world. Gather up all the lost and forsaken from the troubled places of the earth. Redeem and restore their lives. O oh God of grace, bless us with peace. We pray for this community. Help us, like John, to point to Christ, preparing the way for your holy realm of righteousness and justice. O God of grace, bless us with your peace. We pray for loved ones. Support those who are suffering. Let them know they are precious to you. Call them by name and hold them close. O God of grace, bless us with peace. Mighty God, strengthen your people so that we may live in the world as those who have been chosen and called. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Amen, indeed. Our gospel lesson today is about the baptism of the Lord from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 3, verses 15 through 17 and 21 through 22. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them saying, I baptize you with water, but no one who is more powerful, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I'm not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized and when Jesus also had been baptized, he was praying and the heavens were, were opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On Tuesday morning, as I was driving to work, I was listening to ESPN on the radio. The two commentators were discussing the college football championship that had been played the night before. It was a great game, and the University of Georgia Bulldogs soundly beat the Alabama Crimson Tide 33 to 18. And I'm gonna say that again. The Bulldogs beat the Tide 33 to 18. Now Alabama, for those of you who do not follow college football, has been virtually unstoppable in the past decade. In the last 12 years, they have won the championship six times. And there was, across the country, I guarantee you, the only people who were cheering for Alabama were actual Tide fans. No one else wanted them to win again. So one could say that they had been a, have been a dominant powerhouse. And while I am glad Alabama lost and cheered heartily for the Bulldogs, I was intrigued by the commentator's discussion of what happened after the game. Now, while I am not prone to say very many, if ever, if any, uh, positive things about Nick Saban, the coach of the Crimson Tide, I was struck by what he did at a press conference following the game, and it gave me pause. You see, two of his star players, the quarterback and Heisman Trophy winner Bryce Young, and the star linebacker, and Bronco Nagurski Award winner Will Anderson were sitting at the news conference, shouldering the blame for their team's loss. All three of them were sitting at a table with Coach Saban in the middle. And as you can imagine, these young men were demoralized. They took responsibility for the rest of the team, said that they should have played better and were very disappointed for their fans and, they were letting, and that they let their teammates down. It went on and on like this. Finally, after they had said all that they had to say, Coach Saban intervened to say a few words before the press left the room. He reached his arms out like this, put his hand on each one of those guys, and said, I have something to say if you don't mind. These two guys sitting here, they are not defined by one game. These guys played great for all of us this year. They were great competitors. They were great leaders on this team and they contributed tremendously to the success of this team. I want everyone to know how proud I am of these two guys right here. It was at that point that the two athletes stood up and just as Coach Saban had been touching their arms as he said those words, they stood up to leave the table, but before they did, they each patted him on the shoulder and said, thanks, coach, and left the podium. In those moments, the coach reminded them and the rest of us who were paying attention that we are indeed more than 
our moments of loss, our moments of disappointment, and even our failures. I hate to say this, but Coach Saban did a beautiful thing. He told those young men to fall back in to grace. And in a way, he dared the rest of us not to as well. On the radio show, what struck the commentators and what struck many people is how important moments like that are in our lives. They went on and on about how many of us long to have someone say, I'm proud of you. So many of us want our parents, our coaches, or our mentors to give us those words of encouragement, those girls or boys, to speak out and say, I'm so pleased with who you are and what you've done. I respect who you are. These two young men on that podium are college kids, 20 years old, sophomores in school, carrying a great weight on their shoulders. If they let a moment of defeat define them, they may never find the courage to live into their potential. They would carry shame with them, and there is nothing more powerful than shame to derail our lives and bury the joy we carry. Maybe if they let that moment of loss define them, they would quit the game altogether. And the truth is, we all need affirmation in our lives and someone to say, let it go, move on. There is still more living to be done. As I heard these commentators have this very lively conversation about this, both of them having been athletes, both of them talking about how important it was, I thought to myself, my goodness, if they only knew the meaning of baptism, if they only knew that baptism does exactly what they were longing for. Baptism through the love of God and that moment in our life that what we did this morning is a demonstration of what God has already done for all of us and that is to love us, to save us, and to bring us together. When Jesus was at the beginning of his ministry, John, when he was preaching at the Jordan, was preparing to end his in order for Jesus' ministry to begin. At his baptism, God was there to give Jesus those loving words, claiming and affirming him as God's own. But the story does not end there. The story of baptism continues to live in each of us. The grace of baptism proclaims God's forgiveness for what is present as well as for what has gone before and what will come. Forgiveness and salvation is already there because God decided long ago that love would define our relationship with him. In our baptism, we acknowledge God's love is not for us to control, but it is a gift that God has given to us, to all of creation, that we may live and live fully. And baptism is the eternal comforting words telling us not to be defined by sin, but by grace. And so often we want to put boundaries around this love, around this grace for ourselves and for others. We want to add to a but to God and his grace and his gifts. God loves us, but if we don't love him back, he will destroy us. God forgives us, but 
if you do anything that warrants needing forgiveness, well, we can judge you all we want. God came to save the world, but only the people who believe exactly the way I do. God loves us, but only if we are almost perfect, or at least appear to be almost perfect to our friends at church. The gift of baptism, the gift of God loving us and claiming us has nothing to do with us. It has everything to do with God. We do not need to earn God's love. We do not need to earn God's forgiveness. We do not need to earn God's grace or mercy. God decided a long time ago to give us that gift, and it simply is given. God gives it to us. And I can see it. I know some of you want to add the buts. I know it's a gift, but we have to pay God back with interest over the course of our lives by doing a bunch of good deeds. That is not true. God loves us for the sake of loving us. God saved us for the sake of saving us. God forgives us for the sake of forgiving. God showers us with grace for the sake of showering us with grace. It is a gift. It is a gift. And in our baptism, we simply acknowledge what God has already done for us, that God has already given us that gift. God has loved us. God has lived and died for us. God has risen, for, risen from the dead for us. And in our baptism, God tells us we are his. We are defined by grace. If there were ever a time in history to let this truth ring out, it is now. Although every moment in history is a time for this truth to ring out. This is the good news. This is the good news that we Presbyterian-style Christians claim loudly. It is a way of looking at baptism that is not necessarily unique to us, but it certainly defines us foundationally to what we understand our discipleship to be, that God moves first, and that love is already surrounding us. And now is the time for us to let that truth ring out. If you've been sitting wondering, is it time? Is it time? No, now is the time. Now is the time because the world is grieving. We know that. Our society is very divided in many ways. It seems we try more and more each day to exercise control over ourselves and each other in order to alleviate our anxieties and build up our own self-esteem. It seems like people are angrier and angrier that more and more people are turning away from the church because we seem not to follow the teachings of Christ. Amen. And it's into this world that we must take the good news of God's love. We don't have to be right all of the time. We don't have to be perfect. We don't have to be wealthy or meet unreachable, unreachable beauty standards. We don't have to be young. We don't have to be old. We don't have to win every game or every argument. But you know what we have to do in order to be worthy of love and life? You know what the message is we need to take to people? You don't have to do anything to be worthy of love and life because God 
already loves you. And this is the balm that can heal so many wounds in our world. The balm of love. And that truth can heal individuals, it can heal congregations, communities, and even, I believe, whole societies. What we have done or what we have left undone, what has been done to us, these things do not rob us of our value or steal from us the image of God that we bear. So, in the shadow of this baptism, I say today, hear the good news. We are children of God, beloved children of God, with no buts. Thanks be to God. Amen. At this time, let's once again offer thanks for all of the gifts that we have received, from baptism to our monetary gifts to the gift of love. Let's offer thanks. Gracious God, we come to you today recognizing all the gifts that you have given to us, and today we dedicate those gifts back to you. We are grateful for the offerings that have been brought to give glory to your name and to help us share the gospel. We are grateful for the gift of baptism, for the grace that showers us. We are grateful that we have a purpose, and that is to love as we have been loved. Help us to receive your love as it comes to us with no strings attached, perfect and complete in Christ Jesus. Help us to integrate that into our own lives so that whenever we go out from our homes and enter into relationships with other people, that your love will be all that shines through. And we are grateful, O oh gracious God, for the gift of forgiveness so that when we don't love as we often should, that your grace is already there Forgiven, having forgived us, give, having forgiven us, so that we can move on and be defined by your grace. For this we say, thank you, amen. Are we going to have, are the slides all right? Do you know, will we have the hymn, George? He says, I don't know. Okay. I invite everyone to please stand with me we are going to sing our closing hymn. Are the slides all right, Danny? All right, we will have the words. Um, and we will sing Baptized in Water. It's a, a familiar tune to um, Morning Has Broken. So I invite you to sing with us.
as often as you practice with new technology, which we are doing this morning, it doesn't ever seem to work right the first time. So thank you for being patient with us. Sisters and brothers, family, beloved children of God, as you go from here, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Go in love and serve the Lord. Amen.